unveiling a shocking revelation about a long hidden secret could change your family's life in an instant. This could cause pain and can have significant changes in a person's life. Like a woman learning that she's got another dad. These are the cases of parties who learn the truth through shocking confessions. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Lee, you stand before the court with a question you say, biological father, or is it another man who is now deceased? Yes, Your Honor. No. In a quest to find out the truth, Ms. Sonia's in court to seek answers concerning the truth of her being the biological daughter of deceased Mr. Miller. Now she only learns it is when she's 38 years old. Who raised you, your biological father, or is it another man who is now deceased? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. France, you're here along with your brother who's waiting outside of our courtroom. You say... Mainly because I only knew one man to be my father my whole life until he died. I was the daddy's baby. With me and my father was very close. I never... So it's been real hard for me. Mm. I understand. Take your time. For it's hard for me to be years. here even questioning my paternity. So, Ms. Fran, please tell me about this search, how it came about. You say this was your father's dying wish. Could the saying blood thicker than water be true? Now, her kids and Ms. Francis' kids have bonded well without even having the slightest idea of being related. I mean, going to the same school with her supposed sister and getting talks on how they look alike was pretty appalling. We've been best friends and never even knew they really? were cousins. Yes. I even know her grandmother. And her grandmother and my grandmother are best friends. And I still never met Mrs. Lee until I was 42 years old. Wow. And Miss Lee, you never had any now. Well, um, I remember when we were in high school, I was at the same school and they would tell me like she went at a time before I came and they would say it was a girl here. Really? I really missed it as gossip and rumors. You know, I had no reason to think no fact was to that. Both Mr. Miller daughters have been on a search, finding their long lost sister. Now their search eventually came to an end after being able to find her. Now with all these stories rolling in, Ms. Sonia's in doubt as it was a strong pill to swallow. Got this news, your father said find her. Yes. How did you go about doing it? Well, I started on Facebook and I didn't find her on Facebook, nowhere. We thought she was Sonia Miller, but I couldn't find her at all. And by my dad passing away and wanted us to find her, I wasn't gonna stop my search. I was gonna keep on searching. And one of our friends is her friend. And the picture popped up and I looked, I said, she's right, just Facebooking and calling my sister, said, Sonia's not dead. This is the Sonia right here. So, so said, what is this Facebook. you're holding now, Miss France? This is the obituary. There wasn't no justification for Sonia's parents to have held back the truth and keep her in the dark. Now, she'd been involved with Mr. Miller in the past, but he left her while she was pregnant with Sonia. The secrets got a way of coming out indeed. My dad knew, but nobody told me. And then even when I got old enough to understand and accept it, nobody told me. So what about sibling rivalry or bonding with my sisters, double dating, all the things I might have could have had, or even not liking each other, whatever the case may be. <laughs> still today, there's going to be... You also still sound doubtful in a sense. I, I am. Um, I don't have any proof. I was born, and I have this, I was born with one name on my birthday. Jerome, please pass me when that When I evidence. was a child, my mom and dad... The truth may be painful, but it's necessary for healing and moving forward. Now, the Millers were in hope because they believe she's her long-lost sister. Now, will the dying wish of a deceased Mr. Miller being able to find his daughter come true? Let's wait and see. In the case of Lee, Lee France Miller, as to whether Sonia Lee is related to Ronald Miller and Rachel France, and thus is the biological daughter of the late Ronald Miller, your <laughs> biological <laughs> brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lawrence appears in court petitioning for a paternity test after his best friends told him that he could be the biological father of three-year-old Antonio. Years recently dropped a bomb on you. Uh, you claim she suddenly told you she believes you are the father of her son, three-year-old Antonio Chan. Now, Ms. Payne, you admit, though you were engaged and sleeping with another man at the time of conception, you believe that Mr. Lawrence is actually your baby's father. So I said, why, was you, why, why would you wait so long to tell me that I need to take a paternity test? So mm -hmm. I called her back and I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the paternity test for you because, for one, responsibility for it. When she told you that Antonio could be your child, or you were his father, your first inclination was to say, that's not possible, or what? She named the son. Why keep your best friend in the dark about the issue only to bring up the truth three years later? I mean, of course he's in doubt, because he believes that her fiance could probably be the father because he bears the name on a kid's child birth certificate. Very best friend? What? 
Yes, Joan. I was, I was, I was scared. I, it was all kind of emotions going through my mind. I didn't want to. This is my best friend. I love him. I didn't want to. Love me. Throw. I was like, oh my God. He looked exactly like Sid. But you named him after another man. Yes. I just denied it. I was so scared. I wanted to tell him I just couldn't. I just denied it. I said no. And he ended up signing the birth certificate. And I named my child after him. Now, if I took uh, anybody virginity, it took me that fast. That, that the same it. day you were doing that. It wasn't no same if, day. If, so wait a minute. I, um, I know we're you know here. I to now both of them been intimate, which gives a probability that he may be the father. But her fiance had already done a DNA test proving that he ain't it. If he wasn't gonna be, if he wasn't what gonna be. What you mean? Why? On, because man. that's who I was that's with at the time. So you that's who I was with okay, at the time. Wait, I knew who I was with. But do you, you want me? Let me ask you this. Pull the name out the sky. Or something. She know the father. Mr. Father. Lawrence, why do you think she's lying? The reason why? Let me tell you, Judge. One day I went out to her house. She was having sex. And a big boom, like boom, 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 at That's the door. Black. Hear another boom. I said, you need to get up and go to the door and see who that is. She get up and go to the door and peep out the peephole. And I'm guessing it was one of the stalkers or one of her boyfriends. Exactly. You don't even or know. Because you're not open up the door. You don't even tell So him. I'm saying to myself, like, that, that gotta be a dude out there. He like opened up the door and says, now you're kicking at the door. So I heard you. How you saying you don't know who stuff. it is and now you so hear said, somebody said, at the door? You, you lying. Leave. Jump out the window. You know what I'm saying? Naked? No, I put on all my stuff, I jump out the window. <laughs> and you know, she came downstairs. <laughs> She came downstairs. I don't know why you she came lying. downstairs with the baby in her hand, and she could have told me right then and there. You know what I'm saying? As we sit in the car, that this is this is my. Uh... Now both parties have got a rocky relationship as best friends, and this issue has further strained their relationship. And her calculations clearly made her confident of who the baby daddy was. All right. So the yellow are the days that you were intimate with your fiance at the time. Yeah. On the 8th, although the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th, you were with your fiance again. Yeah, we got back together. Mr. Lawrence, as you look at this calendar, were one of the men, even though you only had a day, is <laughs> not the father. So now you're confident Mr. Lawrence is the father. Yes, and sure, I haven't been with anybody else but him and my ex-fiance. He's the ex-fiance is not. A relationship of 10 years is on the line. Mr. Lawrence is ready to accept the outcome of the situation. Now, will her claims and calculations be right? In the case of Lawrence versus Payne, when it comes to three-year-old Antonio, Mr. Lawrence, you are not the father. The shocking revelation made by a woman on her deathbed concerning the truth about her daughter's biological father pushes her, Miss Fuller, to go in search of her real father. This was an emotional journey for the lady. Deathbed, she confessed your dad was not the man listed on your birth certificate. Yes, she You claim she then told you that your biological father was actually a well-known singer is one of the most important days of your entire life. At the age of 10, my mother and father that I've known to be my father had a fight and on his way out, he told me, by the way, I'm not your father. And my birth certificate at the age of 13, on my 13th birthday, my mother told me that uh, he wasn't my real father and that my father was dead, actually. And uh, I did, not to tell my sisters, but just that that's what, something that she wanted me to, to know. But um, I'm just very, um, it is possibly Cornelius. And, and I said, Cornelius, I <laughs> didn't know who that was. And she said that. Now, Miss Fuller deserves to know the truth, having learned the man she knew as her father wasn't her biological dad. She carries on with her search, draws out theses, and possibly persons that could be her dad. Being lost over the years has been a huge burden on her. Somebody she loved so much. The, the, the album that I'd like to Please, present for evidence. Please, let me see that. And this is the song your alleged father wrote about your mother? Yes. yes. Hey, hey, hey. She was able to find out about a man who had a relationship with her mom. Now, Mr. Neal is shocked by the situation, having to realize that she could possibly be his daughter after all these years. That's a lot to take in. In the nightclub, and I start dating. Yes. When she came down to the club, I would take her home. She, she lived in, 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 in the other part of town. All right. And uh, I stayed 
in the ghetto. But, and she, and she was white, you know. All right, so in a nutshell, during the time you dated interracially, was it was a challenge and often frowned upon. Yes. And so you were on opposite sides of the track and different races. Yes, yes, Your Honor. But you were in love. I in, yeah, I was in love. I mean, you know. So what ended the relationship? Well, uh, I felt that she might have thought I loved my music, wanted my music more than I wanted her. But it, it wasn't true. Mm. It wasn't true. She left town, and I, and I was told that Lorraine had left. So but you never saw her again? I never saw her again. Ms. Fuller tells the court that she had a tough childhood. Trying to fit in was a huge challenge for her. The paternity test was the only way to move forward with the situation. Now, Mr. Neal's family is willing to accept her, but regardless, the truth needs to be known. Did you ever hear that she had a daughter? Well, I never heard. I didn't know I had a girl daughter. You know, I, 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 47 years, you know. So when you got this message on Facebook from Ms. Fuller, you were shocked. Yes. Because you had no idea. I had no idea. I, I, I felt that we, yeah, <laughs> a bond, yeah, we were bonded. You as, have? As much as you could, you know, mm -hmm. but not, I, I haven't seen, this is the first time I've seen her. And when you see her now, do you believe she could possibly be your daughter? Okay. <laughs> and so, ma'am, testimony. I already got attached to, to Miss Fuller already. <laughs> And face no, yeah. <laughs> you have. Now, Miss Fowler's journey has been full of uncertainties, and will she be able to accept the truth? I don't know. Let's find out what it is. As to whether Mr. Neal is her biological father, Mr. Neal, you are not Miss Fuller's father. Oh. Now, it was bad enough that she out here sleeping with men carrying around more spent seed than an empty field, but man. Bone and her sister's husband is just downright scandalous. So let's take a look how family ties and friendships are put to the test in this intriguing episode, where a love triangle leads three individuals to Judge Lake's court. But there's a twist. The women involved just happen to be sisters. I mean, look, some sisters just share everything, including me. So let's check out what's going on with the best friend betrayals on paternity court. Mr. Byram, you say the plaintiff admitted to sleeping with another man, and when the results prove you are not Jackson's father, you plan to leave for good. Yes, I do. Now, a woman claims not to know who got her knocked up when she slept with her boyfriend and her boyfriend's best friend during the same period. Talk about a twist. So let's see how, like her, this whole thing unfolded. Petition the court for a DNA test to prove that the defendant is the father of your one-month-old son, Jackson. Uh, you hope these results will save your family because you have two other kids together, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so she straight admitted that, you know, she was getting pounded by another dude's meat and then still thinks that, you know, he's the dad of this month-old baby. Really close friends. Okay. We stayed up all night, five, six o'clock in the morning. I wake up probably seven o'clock. He's already gone. She fought with me the night before so she can leave and stay at her grandma's house. I went over to her grandma's to, you know, she was over there with the kids. I seen him on the couch. All right, look, I get it. The dude was treating you like shit, but that ain't no reason to go and get pumped like an eclair and end up knocked up. Crap, but he always littles me. It's been going on for four years now, and it's just... Do you have feelings for this other guy? No, I don't. You I mean, if, yeah, he's the, do. if he's the father, I've done a lot of being this talk life. About him, you all right, look, I'll say this about the guy. He was with her when that baby watermelon was growing up inside her, you know? I wouldn't have been, especially because he had doubts. Baby, who was at the birth? You were. I was there for everything, every step of her pregnancy, helping her out, doing everything for her the whole time. So, all right. So you helped her out the entire time? You came when the baby was born? I look, I get it. She says she got remorse, but I don't know, man. I just don't buy it. You probably wasn't feeling remorse when you was getting dicked down. But I do regret cheating. You do? Yes. When you look at your son, does it make you feel like you let him down in some ways because you don't truly know? All right, you know what time it is. Time for them results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. All right, you know what? They all got some mad issues, but maybe there's a silver lining in this cloud. Maybe they'll finally get their shit together. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Byron, you are the father. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm happy about that. 
Alright, so dude's claiming that he's now the father of his girlfriend's daughter because his best friend was also tapping that ass. But as they do, this side piece is in here screaming and shouting like she wasn't gobbling down that meat like a sausage goblin. You say this is the third time a woman has claimed you are a child's father. The first two times, DNA testing proved you were not a father. And you now doubt your girlfriend, Miss Stimbridges. Now, Jessica's in here denying sleeping with Joshua's best friend, Eric. Now, he goes into detail as to why he thought she was sleeping with him. And believe me, man, these are some juicy details. Her and Eric had a few beers while I was locked up, which is breaking the brother code, uh -huh. all right? You don't drink. I don't care. I don't care if it's a supermodel. You ain't drinking with somebody that's supposed to be my best friend. You know, you had the right to say no, all right? All right, so dude legit brings in a witness, except it's an ex. I'll you can put them see, on right now, your honor. You can see the McDonald's arches and the booty, booty line. Can't That's booty that. short. You cannot see no booty line. Eric's not here. Not you ain't got shorts. nobody in the press right now. No. Wait a minute. I, I want to hear from this witness that says she saw this incident. Jerome. You know, maybe these allegations is true. If they is, then it just means that Jessica's one sneaky lady. She was there. They wouldn't open the door. That's why I'm sure never seen me. And the front door. Can't. They wouldn't let me in the house because you was well, in there. Uh, let's move on. Miss McNeil, you may take a seat. Thank you so much. All right. Wow. I mean, look, I'm gonna feel bad for this dude if he turns out not to be the dad, because he's clearly got feelings and a connection with his kid. But at the same time, if that mom is acting like a sperm bank and taking free deposits, I can understand why the dude would want to take a soft pass. She gonna have to, she gonna have to get a good lawyer is all I got to say, because I'm gonna fight to take that child. Well, Jerome, hand me the envelope, please. Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Be looking over here like that. Don't tell me where to look. You don't want to lie to him, but yeah, you got All right, so you know what time it is. It's time to check out the results and play a little game called Who Knocked Her Up? Mr. Buchanan, you. Thank you. Right. That's a I blessing. Thank you. Not enough money. Thank you. They ran out of London. Hey, he Thank must have did something, must have did something when I already got it knocked up. All. Well, it kind of looks like Heather might be a little bit of a troublemaker in this whole situation, but either way, I'm glad it's resolved. It's obvious that you're happy and oh, you're yeah. pleased. Yeah, that's, I love that baby to death. I'm glad she's mine. All right, so this one's a little juicy. So a man had an affair with his wife's stepsister, which resulted in a little bitty issue called he knocked that chick so hard he got her pregnant. Now, she claims that he's not the father of her daughter, so let's see how this all works out. Not your daughter's biological father, and you plan to prove that in court today. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And so, how do you end up having an affair with your sister's husband? Not thinking, just being wild at that time of my age, and just not, just not caring. I mean, look, man, if I was caught, you know, cheesing out on my wife's stepsister and giving her to me for two years, I would probably try to spin it off however way I could, too. That was an honest, honest mistake, Your Honor, but uh, at the same... At I mean, look, I get it. Growing up without a dad could be hard. I can attest to that. I know what that's like. But that's no excuse for crappy, stupid behavior. Links, they're your pieces to your puzzle when you figure out who you are as a child. Exactly. I, I mean, without that, I can imagine that you did feel like you didn't know where you came from. I'm sorry about that, too, because I was very selfish for years, and I didn't want to deal with my past, but I wasn't thinking about your life. And I'm right. sorry. All right, so look, if there's supposed to have been a DNA test, there's gonna have to be a record of it somewhere. Otherwise, this is just some straight, next level shady shit. It's almost two, and we that I took the we took a paternity test at that time. Okay, I went on it to child support, and she told me that well, the test proves that he's not the father. So do you have another name to give me? So you I were told you were told he was not the father. Yes. I All was. right, now I want to jump over to you, Mr. Griffin. Do you remember? Hey, look, I get it. You ain't got a dad, you a widow at a young age, but you know what? Shit happens, baby. You gotta get a move on. Cause life ain't gonna slow down for you to cry and mourn and be all upset about it. That's it. So, if he would've went, maybe he would've been alive. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to apologize and you don't no, have to not. feel guilty. I'm sorry. It's okay. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so about my husband. I understand. All right, let's figure out what the hell's going on with all this. Let's check out their results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Griffin, you are not her father. 
Man, a lot's hard like that sometimes, man. You know, sometimes you get a couple candidates, you know, wheedle down. But turns out your mom was a little bit more prolific when it came to sucking on a tube than you thought. Sucks for her that she still don't know who her dad is. Fine, because I've got names for her, so whatever I got to do to find a father, I'm just going to have to continue. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's go. Alright, so a young chick moves in with an old chick because she needs a place to stay. Caveat is, is that the young chick stabs the old chick in the back by lying on her back for the old chick's son. Which, as it do, led to this chick getting knocked up. Now this old lady's up in here saying like, nah, my son ain't that baby daddy. Nah, like he may, he may have pounded her a couple times, but nah, he ain't the daddy. Yes. Now, Miss Perry, you say the plaintiff is judgmental and hates that her son is in a loving relationship with you. You contend that her paternity doubts stem from a narrow-minded view of your past. I mean, look, all I'm gonna say is I know a couple lesbians, and every once in a while, you can fall off that wagon. I mean, she came to me as this godly woman, and I took it as a spiritual thing. I was down and out, and I felt that it was something that God was saying to me, so I most definitely was appreciated. So when you moved in, you didn't have plans to start a sexual relationship with her son. Before I moved in, I was already with her son. And then you land on, you know, a meat pole along the way, or two or three, I don't know, depends on the chick, but look, being a lesbian ain't like a lifetime commitment for some women. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was my path, and I am proud of it. I know but you're I proud of it, it, but you have to let me make a choice about proud to have you, you in it. And that's right. That's home. why I told you up front what it was, and I told your son, let y'all choose if that's what you wanted to do or it's not do. Now, she's in here saying, like, that's the only pole that she's ever smoked. But Mama, of course, is like, well, she, you know, ride my son's meat. What's to stop her from boning some other dude? Dad, either you slept with a lot of other people. You also stated to the court that he's you cute, oh, though. He's so oh, yeah. cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, because he looked just like his daddy. But just uh, no. He All right, you know what time it is, man. Time to check them results and move on with your day. When it comes to five-week-old Brenton McCreary Jr., Mr. McCreary, you are the father. Bam. <laughs> I, you know what? Sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't, but good for them. A little bit anticlimactic if you ask me, but it is what it is. And so you plan to be the grandmother that I this child sure deserves? Do, yeah. Yes, I want to hold him now. Yes, I'm happy. You're you happy? Yes, because that's his first baby, and I want to... We, this kept us from, from kept having... Us. No, this kept I us. I told you. I don't care what you say. Uh, okay. I had to know myself. Something? Staying faithful in a relationship can't be stressed enough, man. Sleeping with multiple women and getting them pregnant only to deny paternity is just straight up stupid. So let's watch as paternity court unfolds these men's worst kept secrets. These are the times when men got multiple women pregnant on paternity court. Hey, you and your current girlfriend, Ms. Fuentes, are 100% certain you are not Lola's biological father. And when the results prove it, you want Ms. Hummel out of your life for good. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. All right, so let's kick it. A woman claims that she was caught in a love triangle with the defendant, which has left him denying that he fathered her eight-month-old little girl. Now, he and his current girlfriend are in court to prove that he ain't the baby's daddy. Now, she believes that she's getting a DNA test. His girlfriend should also be getting one, too. In my opinion, no. I mean, no, there isn't. I did. There was an incident where me and him had gotten into an argument, and basically, I kicked him out. I kicked him out for three days, and during that three days, I slept with my ex. So you slept with your ex during that time? Correct. Admittedly. How soon after that did you find out you were pregnant? Um, to be honest with you, I don't remember dates all correctly, but it was probably about six, seven weeks when I found out I was pregnant. And so when you slept with your ex, did you use protection? No. I did not. Was that within the window of time your child was conceived? It was, it was. And this is baby Anthony. Anthony, yes. And so you admittedly say that during the window of time, baby Anthony was conceived, you had gotten to an argument with Mr. Pack and you slept with your ex. Yes. Now, unfortunately, the court can't go on looks. For Mr. Pack not to walk out of the court and still have a question about his new baby, we got two paternity issues to resolve. We started dating in 2015. We were on it, we've been on and off since then and we broke up when I was about 12 weeks pregnant because he wouldn't get a job so I kicked it out. That's a lie. That's okay. a lie. That's so, a lie. That's a lie. Let's 
use respectful language in the courtroom, but okay, so you told him get out. Yes. And you broke up with him, which means he went over to Miss Fuente. Yes, 48 hours later. 48 hours later. So at that point, when did you tell him you were pregnant? As soon as I found out, I was probably about five, six weeks pregnant. He looked at the he looked at the pregnancy test and he almost started crying. Because he was so excited. Yes. We do you remember this day, back. Mr. Pat? Yes, I do. And you were excited. Yes, during the time I was excited. Because you thought it was your child. Uh yes, Your Honor. Somebody tells me that there's possibly it could be mine, so it's my first kid, so I'm excited to possibly have my first kid. So as soon as they broke up, he started acting like he didn't want any part of the pregnancy. Now, Miss Funtis disagreed. Now, she had a different side to what actually happened. Now, she explained that he had come to her house when they broke up, which was about three days after the whole thing went down. So, they was going down the street to her friend's house when they saw her walking out of her house with another dude. Doubt didn't begin at the breakup. The doubt began exactly. when he saw her with another man. Yes. Your Honor, there is also another two guys in the beginning of the relationship before I came that was lived in the vicinity where she lived at. That is wrong. I dated one guy and we had broke up in December and we got back together in January. That is wrong because during January to March, we did not have no sexual uh, at all. Okay. So you're saying, Mr. Pack, you didn't even have sex with baby, Ms. Hummel yes. during the window of conception? And the baby is born in November, so that time does not add up. We were together in the middle of January, planning to get pregnant. I wanna, I wanna take some time and talk about Mr. Pack's evidence he submitted. He submitted a calendar to the court that outlines why he believes he is not Lola's biological father. So he admitted that they were together at that time, but they slept in different rooms and they barely spoke to each other. Well, she doesn't believe any of that crap. About a handful of times. I can count on one hand how many times that he's seen That's her. That's a lot. She's asked us to watch the baby a couple times, and we have. I mean, it's he wants to find out if the baby's his. That's fine, but I don't feel like shunning the baby because of his doubt, in my opinion. But I don't think she's his, so. Your Honor, and DNA test is all I ever wanted, and that baby's not mine, so I'm not gonna sit here and spend my time and energy and my money on a baby I don't believe that's mine. So, Miss Hummel, what are your hopes today? What are you hoping for? That he's gonna step up and take care of his child. Because he you know for certain this is his. Oh, yeah, 100. 10%, I know that this child, my daughter, is his. Look at her. Like, no, she's not. Now that that's all out of the way, Miss Hummel stated that she feels a lot of anger and relief as she knows that since she got pregnant that he was the father because they were trying to get pregnant. Well, we made progress, but we ain't there yet. We still got another paternity question that needs to be resolved. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pack, you are the father. Two women claim that they were pregnant at the same time with the defendant's kids. Now, they argue that he hasn't been a father to their kids and refuses to support them, but takes care of the other kids. Now, despite having issues in the past, they're both in court united to confront him. Ms. Taylor's suing his dumb ass for 3,608 bucks in childcare expenses, while Ms. Johnson is asking the court to award her $3,880 in childcare expenses. You counter that the only reason you can't support the children you have with Ms. Taylor and Ms. Johnson is because they add for too much money and they create too much drama. So, he had three women pregnant at the same time. He is a dog. He doesn't do anything for my child. I have true, to Your take Honor. care of my child by myself. True, Excuse me, I'm that talking. Not true, Your Honor. I am talking. You do not that interrupt not true, me when I'm talking. Okay, Shut let's, your mouth let's right now. Down. He does not do anything for her. He only wants to deal with women that he can control. He's crazy. He's lost his mind. You can tell by dude's face that he did not see it coming once Miss Johnson said he cut the umbilical cord on her kid. To make it even worse, Miss Johnson revealed that while she was in the delivery room, he was calling her and other women right in front of her family. Now, he started a mess that he can't handle. But when you two go to speak, I took a moment to just observe you. I, I mean, you go to not level 10, level 20 in a matter of... And all I'm sitting and thinking is... I am an adult judge of this court used to watching people in dispute and you all make me uncomfortable watching yell and scream. I can only imagine what a child would feel like because the truth is you need to come up with a resolution for you all. I can't have any children growing up here in that nonsense every day. You know, if you're not in a position to take care of yourself, why put yourself into a position where you're making kids that you're never gonna be able to take care of? Mm. 
Tell me. I'm, I'm an engineer, so I actually make money. I travel. I, I do things to actually provide for my children. I can provide for the children. I can take them where the clothes and shoes and things of that. Done none wait, of that. Wait, 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 please. I need to hear your side. Mr. Barber, give her a chance. We have listened to your side. Ms. Taylor, yes, has he Donna. sent anything? I never got two packs. I never got a pack. And Ms. Johnson, you saying you never got... He never bought my son on diapers. I may do whatever I had to do to get my son diapers. He bought my son three pairs of shoes and three outfits. You know, this is getting pretty interesting. So Ms. Cooper's in court and she doesn't believe he treats her kid differently. Now she believes he loves all of his kids the same, but also revealed that they had come to a common ground through co-parenting. It's not about the kids for them. It's more about they're bitter because things don't work out for them how they plan. And I kind of feel like they had the kids out of spite. I feel like I feel like I feel like they're still in love with Jane. My son wants for Christmas. You know, I'll ask her. No, tell him he don't have anything. We're good. We're fine. You're dead so to you my daughter. So you see firsthand them refuse wow. Christmas presents. And no. Yes, and even Carol has said that you're dead to my daughter. You're not her dad. You're dead to her. I never like, said who that. wants to really deal with all that? Honestly, she's definitely bothered about the wrong thing. Now, Ms. Taylor brought a ledger and receipts for childcare expenses. The judge ruled that she is, in fact, entitled to her $3,608 in back child expenses. Now, Ms. Johnson also brought receipts regarding her claim, too. These expenses are all reasonable and legitimate. And Mr. Barber, as though you have acknowledged this child, signed his birth certificate, you have a responsibility to share in those expenses. And for that reason, I am awarding Ms. Johnson the $3,880 she's requesting for this court. Judgment for Ms. Johnson. Cass, please. You know, you've gotten beat down a lot in this courtroom today because you haven't been there. A guy planned a pregnancy with his girlfriend, but suspicions of cheating and the kid's illness now have got him questioning the paternity of her 11-month-old son. Now, he said that he stopped giving her the meat and boning her down during the window of conception and can prove that the kid's not his with undeniable medical evidence. Did you plan this baby, Mr. James? Yes, I did plan it at first. We did plan it at first, Your Honor. You did? At first we did. Take me back. Make me understand the nature of this relationship. Well, we started off as friends, and then it, to lead it to a little bit more, I started living with him. You were a staying couple? staying with him. In love, or you just staying with him, or you living with him? We were in him. love with each other. You were? Yes, we were. A very nice woman he when I first me. met her. <laughs> Or whatever. Because he loves me. I meet very nice people every day. I don't want to have babies with me. Yeah, of course. Now, he claimed that somebody had told him they saw her get out of the car with a dude, but when he confronted her about it, she denied it. Now, I just got to say that if she's riding a pole instead of a car and she got pregnant, but she ain't from the ride, then what's it got to do with anything? A, like session or whatever, different sequence of your life that you can do those type of things. So now, Miss Kingsbury, he's saying that now you've started a pattern of lying. Is that true? No, I told him one lie. Okay, that's it. Pregnant. I was at work. I was like, well, Kitty, I'm about to buy a pregnancy test. And he was like, well, let me know when you take it. Both walk to work. Mm. He just so happened to be walking the same time. Yes, this is my co-worker. We're gonna walk and have a conversation. Oh, he not, turned no, off. She, but she never Kenneth told me that, though. his house and I kept walking never... So this dude, you know, obviously helped participate in the birth because, you know, she ain't gonna get pregnant herself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, baby, Jesus was black. We all know that's truth, right? So we all know that Mary wasn't no virgin. She just had a stupid white husband who thinks she was. So anyway, we know this chick, she definitely ain't no virgin Mary either, right? But this dude still signed the birth certificate even though he had doubts, and you just don't do that. So this kid was born with a sickle cell trait. Now, he started having doubts two months after that. So he decided to do his research and he realized that he or somebody on his side had to be a carrier, but according to him, he doesn't have it, neither does his mom. They never, the doctor never said I had the type of trait, even though it's- Have you gone. ever gone in and been tested specifically? Not specifically. Did you ask your family? Yes, I asked my mother, she said no. I asked my dad, he said no. If she said she don't have it, and nobody in her family don't have it, it, it gotta be another Ms. man. Ms. Kingsbury, because I don't want us to be on shoot. I want us to understand mm -hmm. yes, how a sickle cell trait is passed down, and I want us to understand how it could possibly relate paternity of chance. Now, she claims that she doesn't have it, and her daughter doesn't either. So the fascinating thing is that as we grow up and think about our medical history, if we don't know for certain we've been tested for a particular condition, we may want to get our blood drawn a couple of times to check it out. Except for me, you ain't gonna see my dumbass feed no vampires. You know, plus let's just say that I keep my chicken and eggplant in my pants where it belongs. Talk about that bagak. It has been determined by this court. Mr. James. Yes, sir. You are the father.
The saddest thing about betrayal is that it comes from those that you love and trust the most. Now get ready to bear witness to the ultimate test of relationships and cases where a woman left a man and went back to her husband while he was in the hospital fighting for his life. These are the worst betrayals on Paternity Court. It's your honor. Miss Forrest, you and your husband are here today desperate to put an end to this drama. You say you have no doubt your daughter's biological father is indeed your husband. After two years of waiting, the day's finally here. He claims that the defendant left him for dead only to find out once he was out of a coma that she was pregnant and the baby could be his or her husband's. That's definitely a lot to take in after coming out of a coma. I had got a phone call saying that she was pregnant. I heard it from my aunt first, but oh. on my way to Illinois with my dad, she had called me and told me that it was a possibility that Elena was my child. She told you a possibility? Yes, ma'am. So that means she was admitting that she also had slept with other people? Yes, ma'am. Did you think the other person was just her husband? At the time, no, Your Honor. You thought there were other possible? Yes, Your Honor. No. And you why would just... you think that? Why would you have reason to think that? Because she was working at the time, and some of her check would be coming up missing every time she would get paid. No. And so no. what did you suspect? Because something was missing out of her check? She would get off at 10 o'clock. It would take at least 15 minutes to get home, but she would come in at 11 to 11.30. It took about 45 minutes to get from where so I was working. So it was missing time and missing money. Yes, Where she was MIA. Yes, now, from, All right. where she, from where she worked at, and I know for a fact, it took 45 minutes to get from her work the to no, the house. That's a lie. And at the time, while he was in bed on life support, she reconciled with her husband. She claimed that she had tried to see him, but his mother didn't let her. Well, there was definitely some feelings involved. I mean, she'd gotten back with her husband while he was fighting for his life. I loved Mr. Webb at the time, but we were... You loved him? Well, I mean... I... Yeah. So when you My realized you were pregnant... When, when exactly did you realize you were pregnant? The middle of September. That is a lie, right. Your Honor. Because I didn't know at the time I was pregnant. So, Mr. Webb, how did you find out she was pregnant? She had called me the day that I got out of the hospital. I was on my way to Illinois with my dad. I got a phone call. We had a discussion. She said that I may be the father, but then again, I may not be because she was back with Mr. Forrest. I was there with her at the doctor's office, so it was the middle of September when she found out. It was in August whenever she found out that she no. was pregnant. No, it was not. So there's not a true. month discrepancy. You say September, you say August. Yes, Your Honor. So when you got the news, did you immediately think you're the father? Well, she had told me ahead of time that I may not be the father. There was a chance that I was the father. So now, what makes you stand in court today, Miss Forrest, and say that your husband is definitely the father? I have counted back the times from when she was born, nine months back, and it takes it to the week that I was only sleeping with him. Me and Mr. Webb are already over with. With this close proximity, I'm surprised she's sure who the father is. In her defense, the kid looks just like her husband, and she takes after him, but looks don't always do it. The difference in time is also all a part of the same window of conception. Why wasn't he there for her? The reason <clears throat> I have not been there, Your Honor, I had got an email on Facebook from my aunt that Miss Forrest had had Elena. So you got news that the baby was born. You didn't hear from Miss Forrest herself. No, Your no, Honor, I, not at you, first. You heard through your family. Yes, Your Honor. I, I messaged his mother on Facebook and told her what hospital I was going to be at, where, where I was going to be, when I was going to the hospital, and everything. Him or his family, knew, nobody showed nobody up. Nobody showed so up. So, question: no, you, me you messaged him I messaged his on mother. Facebook, his family, to let them know. But why do that if you know for certain that Mr. Forrest, your husband, is the child's father? Just in case that he did come back being the father, he could say that. He wasn't there for the birth. He wasn't okay. there. I so had the a truth labor. is, even you had doubt. At first in my pregnancy, yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, just when you think you heard it all, it appears that she's afraid that if he gets to see the child, he might run off with her, and there's nothing she can do to get her back. Well, that's the issue right there. She admits that she's been blocking him from seeing her and not the other way around. If you informed his family because you believed it was a possibility he could be the father, proved, why wouldn't you give an him an opportunity to see the baby? He proved he didn't care about not he wants there. it. When, when she told him, he told her he did not care. Well, I so therefore, said that you're he ain't there for two years. I have been in tears for the last two years trying to meet my daughter, and she has never let me once when talk I to her him. or see her. 
When I talked I have to him, had we told him to I was pregnant. I have a fake Facebook account just to see pictures of Elena. I can't get past why you would not just allow him to see her if you thought it was a possibility that he could be her They dad. have all been under For two his years. Time. He's never wanted to meet any. He wants me to come 45 minutes from where I live to his mother's house. I'm not comfortable going alone with my daughter to his For 45 house. minutes? You're not comfortable going with you to see? Not alone, and he's always wanted me to come to his mother's house. No, Your Honor, I have planned to meet her in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is a big big town just so I could meet Elena out in public. In his case, he was even putting in the effort, even with the fact that he wasn't sure he was the father. With tears in his eyes, he stated that he's really hurt because he feels like he's missed out on two years. Mr. Forrest really needs to take it easy. He made it clear that he still wouldn't be allowed to see her until the DNA test results were out. It has been determined by this court that her biological father is Mr. Webb. A man discovers his former lover is pregnant on social media, but she doesn't lead him to believe that he's a potential father until after she gives birth. He claimed that she threatened to put him on child support, so he wants to prove that he's not the father before she can try. She know that baby ain't mine. That's like she just called me last night talking about some would you be mad if he wasn't yours. Oh, that's a lie, though. That's a lie. I never said any of that. OK, let <laughs> me try to translate this. When you were on the phone, he was trying to give you the one up that it may not be yours. This one up that she should have gave me from the day he was born. Not now. So take me back. Before we get to that point, how did you all even meet? It was just we were out. She was with her people. I was with mine. It's like we just linked. I seen this some years later. I got a reputation for being loose. Come on now, ain't nobody got time for this. Okay, but you didn't even know me though, so how would you know? Right. I know you. You don't know me. Okay. So wait a minute, what you're around. saying is, is you had mutual friends. That's how you met? Yeah. And then it turned into a sexual relationship between the two of you. Y yes, but we only, we only had sex three or four times together, that's it. And he told me while we were having sex that he wanted me to have his baby. Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Your Honor, she's a lie. He was scrolling on social media, and he saw a picture of her pregnant, which he liked. She didn't say anything to him. He finally heard that the child could potentially be his when he was born. He was at his house when he got a call from his mother saying some girl was at her house with a baby. I'm still a baby. What you mean, baby? That's how I felt. I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't got no kids. And that is the first time you've ever heard about Jaden. Your mom calls you and says, it's a girl over here with a baby. Man, get over here. I come over there, she gone, the baby laid in my mama's arm. My mama ain't got attached to the baby. And just that quick? Just that quick. Now I'm in but a hard, now I'm in a hard spot stuck under a rock because my family done got attached to this baby. I don't know. I just can't drag him out their life like that. He's already in it. Wait, he just got dropped off. Right. <laughs> my point exactly. That's how quick she fell in love with the baby. She told she Miss Canterbury to leave the baby there with her. She knew from the start that he was Jaden's. She said that Jaden looked how like... How old was Jaden when you left the baby with his mom? Uh, he was probably that, like a month old. Man, that... Yes, right. Exactly. A month old. Exactly. But now he's two years old. Yeah, almost About three. About to be three. Almost three, yep. <laughs> now I speak, Your Honor. Please. Yes. I have something to say. You know this baby was my baby or you claim it to be my baby. If you had a baby and you thought a man was your potential baby father, wouldn't you let him know whether he is or he not? You would and say something and you would and let I him did. know uh, it's a potential you could be. He was so sure he wore a condom because according to him, he woke up with it on. Although he admitted to not using protection the third time, the whole timeline still doesn't lead to what ultimately is determined to be the window of conception. The conception window would have been between September 2nd and September 6th, and the most probable time of sex would be between August 30th and September 6th. Judge, so I told you. So let's go back to day, your calendar, Mr. Cooper. It's off. You just explained it. I couldn't say no. And way. you claim during that particular sexual encounter, you wore a condom. I sure did the first two times. No. Nope. Not the third we time. Didn't not have, October. We didn't have I sex didn't. Three I'm not going to lie. The same year. I, had a few, I had a few drinks. You got caught slipping. Oh, more than I, a few. I, I was more than slipping. I was falling. I don't know what to say, Judge. She stated that this had happened in August, but August appears not to be on his exhibit, and she claims this is because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't believe it could be in August because that was when the child was born, but that he wasn't with her till September. 
Jaden was made in August. I ain't touched back down to Toledo to September. Do the math, add it up. You just did it. You okay. It. You can say what you want, but I don't care. I really know the truth. So, All these people don't know the truth, but I know Ms. the truth. Ms. Canterbury, I need to ask. So obviously, Mr. Cooper has not been stepping up. Nope, not at all. Doing anything for nope. Jaden? Nope, nothing. Who's been Jaden's father My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So your boyfriend has yes. had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden? Yes, he's... We've been together... <laughs> we've been together since before Jaden was one years old. So he's been here, he's taken care of him financially. He's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. They're very close. Now, Your Honor, may I say something? Now, I just sat here and told you my mama got attached to that baby, right? I just said that, right? So you think I'm gonna disappoint my mama even though I feel that doubt? I'm not about to have my mama look at me because she ain't raised that type of man. Whether I do or I don't know, that's why we're here to find out the day which I need to find out. If he turns out not to be his, she believes he'll be fine without a father as he's got her. She admits she knows where the other potential father is, but sadly, he's not it too. Well, that's just sad, but at least we now know there's another possible father. Mr. Cooper, you The father. Like I said, like I said, like I said. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. A man from Louisville, Kentucky, recently discovers that he might not be related to his father. He comes to paternity court for answers with his mom standing by his side. I get a call about three o'clock in the morning. My mama called and told me that uh the person she told me was my daddy and well, my father that this gentleman was and to go online and look him up. And this is what your mother tells you? Yes. What are you thinking? All kind of things. I mean, she was like, don't be mad at her or whatever. A lot of things ran through my mind. Like what? I thought it was a joke, actually, honestly. I thought she was playing. Really? Yeah. Because that was so far outside of your realm of thinking. Yeah. And so, Miss Cooper, what made you make that call at 3 a.m.? I mean, this has been building up in me, Yana, for a while. I mean, it's not like the first time either I tried to get in touch with Mr. Newby. I just had no way to get in touch with Mr. Newby. And it's it just been weighing on, on my heart and my mind. And it's something I thought my son deserved to know. So at three in the morning, you just said, this is it. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You kept the secret yes. for 34 years. Yes, Your Honor. When you made the call, did you think your son would be able to receive the news or you just felt like you couldn't hold it anymore? I mean, I really didn't know how Dante was gonna take it, but it was something I had to get off of my chest. At the time, it was only her friend that she had told. It was time to go back to school over the summer and she gained weight. Her mom was buying school clothes and she figured something wasn't right because she'd always been a small person, but she was going two sizes up. He was like, this is not right. I mean, and she asked me questions like, was I messing with little boys and everything? And I told her no, I mean, but she figured out that oh, I was pregnant too. And so when she said, were you messing with little boys? You said no, it comes out. What happens the day she finds out you're really pregnant? In my eighth month, she took me to the doctor and when I had my exam and he took, came back and he told my mom, yes, ma'am, she's pregnant and she's very, very pregnant. And you didn't go to the doctor and your parents didn't know until you were eight months pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. At that time, I'm sure she asked you who the father was. It was another, like, childhood friend that I went to a dance with and she just knew me and Mr. Newby to be just as friends, but this other guy I went to the dance with, she just assumed that he was the father and that's what she said it and that's what it was. I got a message on Messenger because I was friends on, with her on Facebook and I got my messenger popped up and they looked on there and it said, you're not going to believe this, this is your child, real talk, and with a picture of Dante on it. And I said, what? And then I text her back and she didn't say nothing. And I said, you can't drop a bombshell on me like that and don't elaborate. And I waited until she finally responded. And I said, does he know this? I said, because how could I be the father? I never seen you pregnant. When he got the message, he was stunned, so he kept asking her questions, like how he could be the father since he never saw her pregnant. They'd always kissed and messed around with each other back in the day, even a family member of his was involved. They were basically young teens experimenting by sleeping with each other unprotected. So you're saying that there was also a sexual relationship between Miss Cooper and another family member of you? I don't recall that, though, Your Honor, but okay, if... 
I don't remember that. So, Mr. Newby, you still feel in disbelief at this point. You see pictures of Mr. Cooper. Are you now curious? What do you do at this point? I mean, this is news 34 family, years I later. I my family members exactly that right there and asked him what did they think. And what did they say? Everybody said he looks like you. <laughs> it's interesting. You all both have that toothpick sitting out the side <laughs> of your mouth. That's what I'm laughing at. Well, it's... It, well, it, I say that because my father does that, too, with the toothpick, and it just goes down the line. It's amazing, but a lot of men do that. But it, it, when you look at that picture, that's what makes you laugh, the way you're holding that toothpick. Yeah. She felt like she stole something from both of them, hence why it weighed so heavy and she couldn't hold it any longer. Oh, I would love my dad. I just, and now it's kind of hurt real bad. No, I understand. I think, when I think about it. Mr. Cooper, when you hear Mr. Newby talk about the things he feels like you missed, what do you feel? I really don't know how to feel about the situation. I mean, I feel his pain, you know, me being a father, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to the Miss House situation by me not having a father, so it really don't, you know, I don't deal with this 34 years. Something I want to know, you know, for the sake of my kids, you know, and, you know, start from right now and move forward. Mr. Newby brought his oldest daughter to court as a witness, and she really doesn't know whether or not Mr. Cooper is her father's son. But seeing her father's pain hurts because they've been through so much with their family and he missed out. If he's determined to be her father's son, she stated that her family would be willing to accept him. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Newby, you are not the father. Welcome back, everybody, to some more drama on paternity court. So let's get going and kick this thing off. Okay, so check this out. Her best friend texted her boyfriend that he's not the father, and now a Michigan woman is in court to prove paternity and save her relationship. Save your family, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Osborne, you admit to being a father figure in Paisley's life, but say her biological father. Well, if there's allegations of cheating, it usually comes with a reason. It's really hard to make stuff up. Even in terms of having trust issues, there's usually a reason behind it. But in this case, there's a lot at stake. Both have this doubt in the back of our mind. We don't speak of it, but it's there. We know it. Um, and we were both, we just both had like a look of fear in our eyes. Like, what did we do? For a baby to scare people, you definitely know there's got to be a big problem. Babies are usually bundles of joy that sew relationships together, but in this case, it's brought them apart and dealt them with a big dose of confusion. Osborne? Yeah, Your Honor, because the day before she found out she was pregnant, I received text messages while I was at work from her best friend stating that she might be pregnant and that it's not mine. Aww, well isn't that a really good best friend that goes out there and leaks secrets because of their broken conscience. I mean, how can the best friend tell, though? Isn't it all based on the time of conception? Guys, I thought I'd let you know. Also, she's been blank, guy two, out in blank, and guy three. There are only a few reasons a best friend might tell secrets to her friend's boyfriend. One is to sabotage, and the other is if it's the truth. That sort of information doesn't just come out of nowhere, but what does the plaintiff have to say about it? They're sleeping with. She did to me what I did to her. So it's out of spite. It's all out of spite. Oh, so you did this to her once upon a time. Once upon a time, something similar. Well, as I said, it could be sabotage, and we're going to take her word for it. I mean, it is her testimony. But I can only imagine how the defendant felt in that instance. It must have been crushing. I guess the funny thing is, is that it might have been a joke to him until he found out she was pregnant. But with doubts as massive as that, he chose to stay. There is a chance that she is my child, and I grew up without a dad, and I, I didn't want her to grow up without a father. Okay, so he was at the birth and cut the cord, and when he tried to settle his doubts, he asked for a DNA test. But apparently, the hospital didn't offer a free DNA test anymore, so he decided to sign the birth certificate. Well, at least he didn't do it immediately. I embarrassed My you. My friends were in the did room. You, did you see the messages? I embarrassed you. I don't care. If it comes out that she's Why did you father. pull my leg? Why did you drive me to the hospital? Why were you there through the whole... Okay, so Judge Lake decides to invite the best friend to court to get to the bottom of the situation. 
Judge Lake asks her about it and she doesn't seem to back down. She tried to mess up my relationship and things in my personal life. So out of spite, I told her boyfriend at the time what she had been doing. So do you have any proof that she was sleeping with other men? Yes, she told me. As they always say, the truth will always prevail. The ex-best friend brought the evidence to court. Messages from the plaintiff to her telling her about the people she's had sexual encounters with. She responds, yes, girl, I've been up all night. He's still sleeping. Another exchange between you and the plaintiff. That's if she still denies it, it shows that she has no decency. She should just tell the truth. Her excuse is that she had a lot going on at the time. I mean, get some shame. It's free. Sleep and go to another guy's house. I can say anything with I'm mad, when I'm mad. I can write anything over a Facebook. Oh, so now I, you're saying you're angry. I was probably angry at him, yes. That's so I that missed that you slept with multiple people and attempted to sleep with a fourth. All right, so the best friend was even there with her when she was cheating with one man specifically, so she's kind of an addition to the problem. Every time she got a chance, she would go to one guy's house in particular, and if he didn't answer, there was another one. And then if he didn't answer, wow. there was one that I wow. helped her introduce her to, and then she would go to his house. All of those allegations, and she just blatantly denies them. Honestly, I don't know who to believe, the salty best friend or the alleged cheater. I can't do stuff with the light off, no, don't even, okay? I, I can actually do whatever I want. You did. Well, with all the back and forth of the cheating situation, they moved on to the conception dates to try to figure out a link between the dates and the messages. Window of conception would be May 13th to May 19th. It was May 17th, 2017, when you sent the messages. What she hasn't figured out is that even though he has doubts, choosing to stay when there's a chance he's the father is the best decision for all of them, and that would have taken a lot of sacrifice. A lot of inner turmoil, and he stayed through it all. A little in the sky is falling. Like he shouldn't have any doubt because he framed an ultrasound or he showed up to support you. That's not the point. He already testified that he did it. There's a lot at stake here. If he's not the father, it would mean she's been lying this entire time. And even if he is the father, it doesn't mean she wasn't cheating on it. Are the fox. I really hope that they figure out that they don't have to stay together just because they have a kid together. It's just going to cause more chaos for the child who's going to have to grow up around spite and hate and it's not going to be fair to her. Okay, so no one can tell if she actually cheated or not, but if she did, it's kind of a shame that she's not comfortable and she's too scared to tell the truth when it really matters. Anyway, on to the next case. Betrayal is the theme of this case as the plaintiff comes to court to help to prove to the defendant that her child is his. It starts with the plaintiff having a relationship with the defendant and conceiving a child with him. But then her best friend of sixth grade went behind her back to marry and have a child um, bum, bum, with the same guy. Scandal. Mrs. Matthews was once your best friend since sixth grade but then you told her you were pregnant by Mr. Matthews and she immediately conceived a child with him and then married him. This had not known quite extensively for sleeping around. Therefore, Mr. Matthews has his concerns about being the son's biological father. He wants to sever his relationship with her. So at first you were I in a relationship. Yes, but she was at the house where we slept together at. And so she knew you were in- Okay, so she acknowledged that that was their only encounter. He then went to her best buddy after that. If the connection she had with them was that superficial, is it accurate to state that she was betrayed? Well, there's a reason people put a band sign on their friend's ex, even if it's just a sexual encounter. Me and, me and, me and my wife been best friends before that. Your Honor, you said they was cousins because he had another girlfriend at the house where they was at. If that's true, that shows why she never thought she was a threat and got caught off guard. That was one heck of a move. She must have been so ignorant about the whole thing. That still counts as a betrayal. So why today are you so convinced that he's the father? 
it's been times where she, uh, can you take me here? Can you take, it's always been about money, finances. She's a gold digger. So wait, now she's a gold digger? She did admit to sleeping with other guys, but believes the pregnancy has to be his. He claimed that he never knew about that, so he's got no reason to believe anything she says. Here's another reason he has doubts. If somebody's saying they having your, I'm supposed to be the father, you gonna have them witness to be at the birth. Why, why, why ain't she telling me, okay? How am gonna... I supposed to call him and tell him? Her ex best friend had a lot to say. She confessed that she slept with Mr. James as a mistake. However, things took a turn after that. Isn't that how they always start? As a mistake? <laughs> I don't believe that one bit. How about you? I didn't intend to fall in love have a baby and, and marry James. That was not my intention at all, and to hurt my best friend. Yeah, but she has all this going on, and she was my everything. Terry was my heart. I was there for Terry through all her stuff, and no I matter what. So she still betrayed her dearest friend regardless of this. She not only had sex with him, but also got married to him. She's currently on trial, denying having a child with the same man who betrayed her. That's just disgusting and chilly. So what type of friend is that? No matter what I did and what I did wrong, she was supposed to have my back no matter what. And she still and I was, with and him. I was always there. Yeah. And to this day, I still, I, and what she don't understand, I and still- It got confusing when Mr. Matthews admitted to getting both of them pregnant at the same time. That must have been really wild and maybe even intentional. Tana, your best friend, what did you think? To tell you the truth, Your Honor, and I told her straight up, you know what? You can have that, because I never wanted him. Yeah, so what was the big deal? Okay, so like, if she doesn't want him, what's the big deal? It's either she didn't mean that, or she just doesn't want her friend having a relationship with him. She's demanding loyalty, and feelings trump loyalty sometimes. That's not too much to ask, unfortunately. I've been called to ask for my son. That's not I true. have to call and ask James, do he want his son? Otherwise, he don't see my son unless he goes to his mama house. That ain't, that ain't true. She revealed that her son is growing up and he's starting to ask some questions. When your kid starts to ask questions, that's when you get desperate. But it's really sad the boy's got to go through all of this. And it's bad when a four-year-old can come to you and say, Mama, why my daddy don't want me? That doesn't make sense. Well, obviously, He's an innocent child. He didn't do nothing to James. They really need to learn how to get along for the sake of their son. For them to do so, he's got to accept that he's the biological father, and that's why they're in court. This recycle was the 15th. There's no way possible it could be pointing to me. Being a woman and knowing a little bit about that biology, that you out of the clear. <laughs> when the kid was born, it was revealed that he made some promises that he couldn't keep. Our guy here probably got carried away by the miracle of childbirth. Don't make promises you can't keep, buddy. All you're doing is breaking hearts. He was sitting there watching him, looking at him sleep, all this. Then he told me himself, Portia, I'm gonna take care of my baby and I'll call myself and put on my cell phone child support, which my mama dialed the child support number. James talked to them himself. All right, so he also voluntarily signed the birth certificate and put himself on child support. I mean, that's commendable, shows he's a responsible guy, at least to a point. But if you're gonna turn around and deny all that, then maybe don't do something so stupid. Instead of getting with Terry, then all of a sudden, you got some oh, he don't wanna kids. pay child support. So why is, why is oh, so let me ask you Only two of my kids got different daddy. The other four guys are all the same daddy while you're trying to put somebody on oh, spot. How old but are you Joe, with that many children? It don't matter what I got. You don't take you care of them. Okay, well, needless to say, he denied all of that. They got into an argument about it, prompting Judge Lauren Lake to ask for some order. The whole thing is just a giant mess. He's I'm mad at the not... fact that I don't want him and never no, have want him. No, yes, I don't, don't want, want you to do nothing, because okay. you never have. Oh. I've been having Jamari by myself, and I'm gonna keep having him by what myself. To me, his doubts seem valid, since she was sleeping with two other guys at the time, too. Judge Lauren Lake pointed that out to her, and she had nothing to say to that. So, let's check out those results. You are the father. Right. Thank you. Right. I told you. I hate you. I promise. Throughout the case, it's pretty clear that the plaintiff was more hurt about the betrayal than the man rejecting her child. This is more of a case between her and her best friend. He's just the intermediary. But they have to figure out a way to make this work so the kid will grow up around loving people who've learned to forgive one another.
On to the next betrayal. A love triangle between two best friends has brought this woman to court. This woman believes one of two friends is the father of her two-year-old son. You are caught in the middle of two lifelong best friends because you slept with them both and now have no idea which is two-year-old Cameron's biological Mr. Santilli has revealed that it's taken him about two years to mend his broken heart after finding out she slept with his best friend. Yikes. Okay, his woes continued when she dropped the bomb that his best friend might also be the biological father of their son. Ooh, drama llama. Down, it's been over a year and a half. I had to convince my four-year-old how he doesn't have a younger brother no more. I had to convince myself that he wasn't my son. She didn't take accountability. She revealed that while he was mourning his grandfather's death, he broke up with her over a text message saying he was going to bring her down. That's pretty cool. He passed away was the day his best friend told me that really he had broken up with me for the girl upstairs. And so this is the best friend you ended up sleeping with. Yes. So how did- Well, that ended in her not knowing who the father is. I always thought there was a code, right? That if you have a best friend, they don't sleep with your girl or any girl you've ever dated. He just lost a person that meant everything no, to him. No, I'm because his ex. he maybe sleeping with his best friend wouldn't be the no. best idea. Absolutely not. Because the best friend, Mr. Zara, was escorted into the courtroom, and oh boy, oh boy, he had some shocking revelations to spill. He told me to do it. Away. He told me specifically in his exactly. house, yo, I don't care about this girl. I have another girlfriend. He just sat there and lied. <gasps> And oh, said, so them he words never left yes, my lips. They going did. I was saying, well, right, yes. 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 they you said they are adults. Let as them my sleep brother, together. You they want to sleep together. Don't matter. As my brother. All right. Well, I don't think that's a good excuse. Judging from the circumstances, he might have not been in the right frame of mind. When she got pregnant, he denied it from the onset and didn't believe the kid was his. So what changed? Said, yo, bro, Kayla just told me that you had sex with her and I denied it. And Kayla came out right on the porch and said, yeah, we did. He's lying to you. And the only reason why I denied it to him was because his grandfather was sick. That was so. So he sits here and says he had no so, idea. Hold, hold on. How, how, how did you say this after my grandfather was sick? If he was didn't sleep together until my grandfather died. But oh! Four months after his friend and his girlfriend both made him promises that the child was his, he expressed his desire for them to be together for the kid via text to her. Most of the time, relationships forged around a kid have never worked out well. About the umbilical cord, I signed the birth certificate. This looks like a beautiful, happy day. Do you know they slept together at no. all? Yes, he does. No, yes, he does. His doubts came back when the child was a couple of months old and he believed he looked like Mr. Zara. Other people around him weren't helping matters either. She didn't just say he's not yours. She she said it she said it ruthlessly. She said, "How do you feel? You're holding your best friend's kid, you loser." Which is why I snapped. What? Which is why I snapped. Which is what led to my incarceration. Well, dang! I can't believe he went to jail on this matter. That's just a terrible thing to say to someone already on the edge. And by her response, you know she doesn't care about him at all. He left for another girl, Whoa. so I am a single adult. Okay. And I can do what I. So the next morning after you went to jail from this incident. And looks like the boy now refers to Mr. Zara as his father rather than the other man who was incarcerated. Those are the specific effects that paternity disputes have. They've officially transferred their confusion onto the vulnerable kid. They have another baby together too. We have a daughter together. Which we? Me and Mr. Zara and I have another son. Okay, so what on earth is going on here? What could have possibly happened that would lead her to be in this position? It's all just a giant disaster, but I'm glad they came to paternity court because they really need to get this over with. Dino shouldn't be responsible for a child that's not his. Behind court doors, this is vicious. We do nothing. No, it's vicious. Fight with each other. As for Mr. Zara, he's got no doubts. He thinks the child's his. Said he looked like him, and also everybody around him told him the same thing. He's also posted him on a social media as his baby. It's a, it's a strong possibility he's not, but reality still hasn't sunk in yet. It took me almost a year and a half to stop crying over that baby, and now if he comes out mine, I'm going to have to deal with all that. Man, he has really gone through it. Well, hopefully the parties get their peace, and it's time for the results. That Cameron's biological father is Mr. Santilli. <laughs> The pain of all of those years and also ending up in jail due to it, 
I can only imagine what's going on in his mind right now. You okay? Stand up, sweetie. Talk to me. <laughs> Tears of joy, relief. 